Super Fun Stuff. Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. In this video, we are trying something new. I like to call it print and paint. In these videos, I show you things that you can print and paint at home. I will walk through a quick tutorial on how I painted these things so that you can try them yourselves. Today, it's all about Marvel miniatures. Recently at Gen Con 2019, Atomic Mass Games showed a new game called Marvel Crisis Protocol. The game takes your favorite superheroes or villains and puts them into the miniature world for big epic battles. This game has some great minis and the rules aren't half bad either. This game will release fourth quarter this year, so make sure you pre-order your copy. The core set comes about 10 minis and some terrain. The rules are out for free, minus the character cards, so check them out. But enough about the details of the game, let's talk about minis. Since we have to wait months until we get our hands on this game, which will only release with a few minis, I thought, why not create my own? Recently I bought an Anycubic Photon SLA printer, which prints super detailed resin things. In short, it is pretty amazing for miniatures. So who should we print first? Well, he's strong, he's big, and he's a little angry. Yep, we're gonna print the Hulk. This 3D model was created by Tom Davis on My Mini Factory, and it is available for free. See the link below for details. It is a super high quality model that screams, make me a mini. So the first step is printing him. I made him a tad bigger than the original model, which still fits on the bed of the printer. I won't go through the whole printing process, but he was fairly simple to print. After that, I primed and painted his base coat. This time, I used an airbrush to paint different shades of green. Airbrush gives a cool color transitional effect. Next, I paint his large purple pants. Right now, he still needs a lot of detail, but it looks very promising. Then I apply a purple wash on the pants. This gives a little more depth since I didn't airbrush them on. To accent the muscles, I apply green wash to the muscle lines and around veins. I take my time to not be too messy and try to make thin, crisp accent lines. And the last thing was a few accents. Hair, eyes, mouth, and a little more on the tattered pants. I stay away from any of the skin since the airbrush already did its magic. And that's it. He probably only took a couple hours to do and turned out pretty great. I thought about doing the comic book style with dark lines, but I'm happy with these results. So let's go back and see how I painted the base. The base is a simple cork base using pieces of wine cork and cork board. I made rebar out of a little wire. You can do a lot of cool stuff with cork, so let your imagination go wild. We start with a primer base, then I paint the entire base a pretty boring gray. Then I apply a heavy wash using a dark brown. Here you can see that it looks like a little swamp. Make sure you let it fully dry before highlighting. Then I use a series of lighter grays and dry brush them on. I also use a greenish white called necrotic flesh to break up the gray colors. Lastly, I use a pure white and super light on large areas in some of the higher raised bits. The last part, and here's how you get the good contrast dirty look, is use pigments. I overload the rebar with dark red pigment and use a dark brown pigment on creases and deeper areas. This gives a good effect of being rubble and dirty. I paint the border around the base and you're done. You can knock out a base like this quickly with little cost. You're probably wondering who this base belongs to. Well, that's a surprise. I decided to make another character, and that's Ant-Man. I wanted to see how small I can make a character on my printer. This model was created by Master Clip and is available on Thingiverse. And well, Ant-Man is tiny. I had to keep him in a plastic baggie so I wouldn't lose him. I decided to put him on top of a falling column. I mounted him prior to painting him, just so I could have something to hold. He was painted in a basic method of primer, base color, and then details. At this size, you can only paint so much, so I stuck with his primary costume colors. And here they are. Here's the Hulk wearing his purple pants and his immense anger. His favorite word is smash, and he breaks stuff. Overall, the print turned out well. He scaled just about right for the game, and he is ready to be used. And here is Ant-Man, sporting his tiny suit. Even now I have a hard time seeing him. Resin printers are truly amazing that you can print something that small. I am also amazed I didn't lose him in the process. And here's the money shot, side by side, ready to fight it out. Could you imagine the Hulk and Ant-Man fighting? It's hysterical.
While we are showing 3D printed miniatures, here are a few of my early prints. Here's a Lictor-like alien from 40K. He is an invisible alien assassin. This model was created by Seb Thies and can be found on Thingiverse. He is printed in a clear resin and a matte coat on top for a cool frosted look. I had to keep something behind him just so you could actually see him. And here is a ghostly wraith. This model was created by Yasashi Kyojin Studio and can be found on my mini factory. This guy is pretty cool because I lit him up. There's a blue LED in the middle of his heart that lights him up. I also suspended him using a resin column that I've had basically forever. It was a fun little experiment using this method of suspension. And lastly, I made a miniature of a miniature Tao stealth suit, also from 40k. He was a fun little experiment that I thought I would base as well. This model was created by Print a Lot Apotamus and can be found on Thingiverse. And that's it. Here's all my recent creations using a 3D printer. I'm still amazed at the quality you can get from these prints. Check the descriptions for the links to all the models. I have some other models in the works, more Marvel stuff and other things too. Thanks for watching.